Okay, I'm going to see if I can show how I did my little backgrounds on the cards using the Distress oops, Oxide inks. And I'm going to use this little soft, um, I call it like just a little short makeup brush, but it kind of reminds me of a man shaving brush. And it's really, really soft bristles. So I'm going to load it up with the ink. And get it kind of good and, and loaded and then I'm going to start in the center with a just a light circular motion and I start on the cardstock really really lightly so that I don't end up with a bunch of harsh lines from the bristle bristle ends of the brush and kind of get an area in there that I want covered fairly nicely like I want it and then when I change colors I actually have a piece of t-shirt material and it's dampened with some water from a spray bottle and then I rub the brush over it to remove the excess from the the end and then I have a dry one on the other side of me that I rub it all over to get the to kind of dry it and it's got a little bit of staining but it's not bad so now I'm going to put the blue color for the sky and I basically do the same thing and I actually did buy enough of these brushes to do the the initial set of Distress Oxide inks. I just was only using one right now until I kind of get used to them and get the feel for them so that I know that that's kind of what I want to use with them is this particular brush because I also have some stipple brushes that I had bought so I've been debating on if this is the way I wanted to go or or use the others I used to use the others with the regular distress inks all the time so that's as much of the blue colors I'll put and then I do the same cleaning it off and I'm actually applying these colors a little heavier than I did on the other two cards When I did the first backgrounds on these two cards, I kept the colors a little bit lighter because I didn't want to take away from my little bird images that I had done for them. But this card is going to have a different group of elements on it. So I felt like the, the little bolder ink color... For the background would be would be okay so this is the green and I'm the world's worst with colors I relate to the inks kind of like I do my artist paints and I just use what I like or what goes together so I don't always know what the color of something is but it's peeled paint Right now, the advantage is just only having 12 of the Distress colors. Maybe I can learn them and then learn the other ones as I go. Ha ha. Okay, so that is the background layer for this card. And I don't know if I'm going to layer or add any other distress color around the edges but it will layer onto a piece of black so that the black is going to kind of frame it then this piece is going to go somewhere right in there and I don't know the company that made this because I got it in one of those batches of dyes from China so but I love it it looks like um What's that stuff? Like maybe a piece of cheesecloth or, or some kind of random fibrous stuff, but it's just really cool. And 
This is one of my dies from Elizabeth Craft Designs. And I'm going to do this where some of that is going to be kind of woven into that background. And then all of these little flowers, this is Elizabeth Craft Designs, will go on here. And this will be kind of a dry run you'll get to see. And then once I get through with everything I know I'm going to do to it, I'll actually glue everything down. And I'm sorry I sound like I have a frog in my throat, but I think this damp weather that moved in on us kind of is not getting along with me. And then the hummingbird will go somewhere right in there, like he's flying in to feed on the flowers. So that's going to be the, the overall gist of it. And then this will all go on to just a craft base card. Because I just like craft colors, so I like to work off of them. But depending on what else I do to it, um, by the time I show it again, it'll probably all be put together. But I just wanted to show you how I got it to that point. Thanks.